Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. All of us have to write. Some of us write for our jobs or for classes, while others tap out the great American novel in their free time. Those of us who fall into none of those categories have to write emails or speeches for Toastmasters. It's likely that at one time or another, we're all going to suffer a bout of writer's block. Unlike the flu or whooping cough, there's no inoculation. If we get it, we just have to grit our teeth and survive, hoping to come out on the other side unscathed and verbal. While occasionally we have the luxury of outweighing writer's block, more often we face a deadline. The pressure of having to produce can combine with the pressure generated by the blank page to create tiny explosions in the brain. Not only is this messy, but any remaining ideas leak right out into the resulting holes. When this happens, you might feel as though you should sell your house, quit your job, sell your family, and set yourself up on a freeway exit ramp with an unfortunately blank cardboard sign. <laughs> but there is hope. I have some tips for overcoming writer's block. I'll discuss three common causes of the malady and the tools you can, that can help you knock it into remission so that you can produce a fine piece of writing. The first cause I call blank page, blank mind. You have no idea what to write about. This often happens at the beginning of a project. Maybe you have a hero, but you can't think of a heroine, or you have a mystery, but you can't figure out the villain, or you have to write an essay, but can't think of the topic. One way to overcome blank page, blank mind is to research your topic. This almost always works for me. If I can't figure out how to fill in a blank in a story, it's usually because I was too lazy to do the research that I, I had to do. I don't know what cowboys do or police procedures. In writing, ignorance is not bliss. As soon as I start researching a subject, the ideas start to flow so I can produce a fine piece of writing. A second approach I use is to stop trying to think of an idea. Get your mind somewhere else. When you just don't feel creative, free write. It doesn't matter what you write, it can be utter gibberish or you can write, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to write, over and over and over again. The important thing is to write, write some more, and then keep writing. Sooner or later, your brain gets tired of producing meaningless tripe, excuse me, <clears throat> and it produces an idea. When it does, you are conveniently using the very tools you need in order to capture your idea and develop it into a fine piece of writing. The second cause of writer's block is facing an intractable problem with your story or the logic of your essay or whatever. When I'm at a computer plotting a story, I often find problems I can't solve. And the same thing happens in real life, of course. And this tool that I'm going to suggest works for e either of those. While some people advocate changing activities, maybe going and you know, cleaning the toilet or changing the oil in your car, or some other fun-filled thing, what I find works the best is to change my writing tool. If I'm at the computer, I pick up my favorite pencil and my favorite pad of paper. You can see I've been doing that a lot. And I start writing about my problem with, you know, w with a pencil and paper. If you're an extrovert and you do your best thinking out loud, you can talk into a voice recorder or Use your landline to call your cell phone and leave a message for yourself. The important thing is to use a different tool. I think that what happens is by changing the tool, you change the part of the, your brain that you're applying to the problem. You get a fresh perspective on it without having to hunt up another human being and explain the entire book or speech or paper to them. This method always works for me 100% of the time, allowing me to get over writer's block and produce a fine piece of writing. The third and most insidious cause of writer's block is your own internal editor. In other words, your left brain sabotages your right brain. It's possible that having your left hemisphere surgically amputated would solve the problem. Um, to my knowledge, this hypothesis has never been scientifically tested, however. So you could be the first to try it if you're inclined to further scientific progress. 
But if you're a coward or hate pain, try timed writing instead. Set a timer for, say, 10 minutes, and then force yourself to write without stopping or making any corrections for the full 10 minutes. Now, I find it's really hard to control that little finger. It wants to hit the backspace key and keep, ma keep making corrections. So what works better is to just admit that your first draft is going to be dreck. It will be dreck. You will have to edit it. You just shouldn't edit the first draft because that stifles your creativity. Sit down, push through that first dreckish draft. Only when it's finished should you turn, should you turn loose your internal editor. On your second and subsequent drafts, you can bludgeon and buff the dreck into as fine a piece of writing as you're capable to as you're able to create. Unless you're Nora Roberts, who neither believes in nor allows herself to experience writer's block, the malady can be deadly boring and frustrating. Help yourself subdue it by researching, free writing, changing writing tools, and putting off editing until you've completed your first draft. You'll be glad you did when you create a fine piece of writing. Thank you. Uh, can we get a minute for comments?